Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to do a song, and we're not going to use no doll, no real band, no, and no doll of any kind. We're going to do this song entirely within the band in a box console. And there's a couple of, of neat little tricks that you can do that kind of make all the difference in how the song actually comes out. So it was a reggae song. I thought I'd put a reggae song together. And it's important to look across up the top here. We have a bass, a piano, drums, drums too, synth, loop, and a guitar. So that's what make up this song. So if you listen to the song. Now it's going to drop. Right here it's going to drop. I also want you to notice that we had an organ type sound, but now it's gone to a piano. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's bars five through bars 12, it's a piano. And watch what happens at bar 13. I've got background vocals at bar 13. So I took the piano out and decided to use some background vocals for that part. So bar 13 through bar 20 is background vocals to go with the song. And then I've got a brass ear string type sound coming in at bar 21. Check it out. So now I've got this brass string type tone going through bar 21. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. I just want to show you how the song was actually arranged. Because when we have limitations when we're trying to do it all within the console, I don't, I'm not going to use my utility track. Okay, this is just a straight, straight, bad in a box track. Here is my solo guitar back. Get out of sound. So again, so you can do all of those things within the console without ever going into any DAW. So if you don't, if you feel like you don't want to mess with the DAW, but just remember that there's a limitation on the number of tracks that you can use. Now again, this is not about utility tracks because we can also, if you have 21 or 22, you can also do those utility tracks. But again, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, band in a box, just pure core bad in a box track so how did i do that well i did that by bar settings i did the whole thing through bar settings so for my bar settings the song started out and notice i've got the guitar playing right but i did not want the guitar to go past bar four so at bar five i went into my bar settings click here go to bar settings and I muted the guitar starting from bar five so the guitar doesn't play anymore. And it does not come back again until I think it's bar 29. I brought the guitar back at bar 29. Notice I put back to normal at bar 29. So that's when I brought the guitar back. So the guitar was playing the entire time. However, through bar settings, I had it actually muted from what, from bar uh, five through bar 29. I had it muted. And again, that's exactly how I did that. Well, the next thing I wanted to do is, remember I told you I started out with a string type sound in the beginning of the song. I changed it to a piano at bar five. I changed it to oohs and ahs. <laughs> microphone dropping down. Sorry about that. I changed it to oohs and ahs at bar 13 and I used a brass sound at bar 21. How did I do that? Again, I did that. And this is a neat trick right here. Because again, remember, you only have so many tracks. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven tracks I can play with, which is not a lot. So at bar five, when I wanted the piano to start, and I'm going to play, let me play it for a second, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Song starts out. And that's what this sounds like. It's an organ, right? At bar five, it turns into a piano. Check that out. See, is that cool? And then at bar 13, I do background oohs and ahs. Oohs and ahs at bar 13. When I get to bar 21, I bring a string sound back in. Now, 
one of the things that happened is that the string sound became too loud throughout the mix, right? So what did I do? So when I got to the string sound, I went here. Well, let me, let me back up for a second. I'm going to show you how I brought in. I had an organ sound in the beginning of the song, which was my default, right? At bar five, I wanted to play a piano. So I went into my bar settings. Now watch this now. And then I went to real tracks here. I changed the default pattern that what Band in the Box calls that track is strings. Even though it's not strings, Band in the Box calls it strings. So what I did was I changed the sound that I wanted to a piano on the strings track, which is really, it's called synth here, but it's actually strings. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but that's what I did here. And changed it to piano, an electric piano at bar five. Then when I got to bar 13, cancel. When I got to bar 13, I went back into bar settings and I changed the real track, notice here, to vocal oohs and ahs. God, my microphone keeps falling down. What in the world? I need to tighten this up. <laughs> Sorry about that. It changed to vocal oohs and ahs at bar 13. Notice how you, so in other words, you can change the real track throughout the song. You don't have to keep the same real track playing throughout the same track. You can actually change the, song, the sounds on that track through bar settings. So I changed it here. Oops, let me get out of this thing. And then when I got to 21, I wanted a string sound. So I went back to bar settings. I went to real tracks. Again, it's on the string track and I changed it to Euro dance string. So that's how I got that actual effect in doing that is by going into bar settings and changing it, right? Well, when I played it originally, also the strings were too loud. The piano was fine, the ooze were fine, but the strings kind of were overwhelming. So I went back into bar settings here and I reduced the sound. So I went and I went into the synth section and I actually took and reduced the sound. So again, so I went back to normal. I went change by and I changed it by, notice the default is zero to 120 volume, right? So I backed it off 20 dB. So I put in a minus 20 dB and that made the string sound come in lower in volume at that point. Because I didn't want to adjust, I can't adjust the fader because I can't automatically adjust this fader going just in the console. Now, if I was doing um, audio, if I had my audio edit window window, I could do that. But again, this is not about using the audio edit window where you can do some of this stuff. This is about just core, band in the box, using the console. So that's how I achieve this overall sound for this song. So I'll start with guitar. Now, why did I want to do that? I wanted to do that and I wanted to bring the ooze in because I have a vocal here on this audio track. Just a little vocal, or just something to sing along with, right? So again, so I'm going to play it now with the vocal. Baby, I did you wrong. Bring myself up a little Leave bit. Up now, it's true. I wonder how you feel. Cause I've been away from you. I heard somebody say that I was oh so wrong. Which I actually recorded just I made a the mess console of things. That's why you said so long. Yeah, my, my background vocals are there. How can I make it right? I'm gonna get it right tonight. Now, what I wanted, I, I like the way I put the vocal down, but I wanted to tweak it a little bit because remember, we are just using the core band in the box. We are not using a doll. So I went into my audio track here and I decided to add some plugins, some effects, right? And these are standard PG music effects, nobody else's. So I went in and I added the five band EQ and this is the five band EQ. Let me just take, I had it on bypass so that I can show you for demonstration purposes. Uh, 
So right here, I'm going to take it an, an, un, an undo bypass so it actually is active. So if I undo bypass right now, I can play with the EQ of my voice. And this is what I call a vocal chain, right? I'm going to go from EQ to dynamics to reverb to chorus, just to give you guys an idea of how I can make this vocal sound different. So again, so now when I play the song singing, Baby, I did you wrong. I can take. We both know it's true. Add a little I wonder how you've been. Take some top out. Since I've been away from you. Bring myself up. I heard somebody Just to find say frequencies, right? that and I also, was so wrong. And also, a lot of times when I do an EQ, I'll take a lot of the low and the mids out. And the reason why is because when I do that, I take out a lot of the floor noise that I might get from the microphone. So I, a lot of times I reduce a lot of the low and the mid range, just all my vocals. I always do that. Just one of those things, because again, I don't want those lows in there. Right. And that's what it sounds you, like. That's what the vocal sounds like. I now. heard somebody say that I was oh so wrong. I made a mess of things. That's why you said so long. So I like that. that and now you may, again, this is a personal taste, right? So you may tailor it differently for your own voice, but that's a personal taste for me as I like my vocal to be nice, up and bright. So that was the EQ part, EQ first. The next thing I do is I'm going to go and I'm going to compress. So now I'm going to use my PG Music Compression. And let me show this. And you see, I went to show plugin. And by the way, I can actually still show my, here's my EQ plugin. Here is my Dynamics plugin, and I, now I can set my compression according to how I want it. A lot of times I'll compress at a negative 24. I'll have a tack at a five milliseconds to grab it quick and release it with eight, within 80 milliseconds. And what compression really does is that it kind of keeps your, your your volume at a at a good level, um, so you don't over you're not overpowered because as you get loud. What a compressor will do is the compressor will push that vocal down into a certain range to keep you kind of level, to give you a nice level tone. So now if I play it, let me move this over here. So now if I play it, Baby, and you can see you the compressor wrong. works, pushing, both know it's pushing my vocal down so that I don't I get too loud. And again, I can always I heard it. somebody say that I was also wrong. So now I've got EQ going and I've got compression going, right? So the EQ is feeding the, is, is feeding the compressor. So now I'm going to add a little bit of reverb. I like a little bit of reverb. Some people don't. I don't care. I like it. So that, and, and again, in this case, guess what? I'm the engineer. I'm the producer, so which means I get to choose what I want and what I don't want and nobody else but me. So now I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to the song. Baby, I did you wrong. We both know it's and, well, again, true. I'll the reverb for pre I, I like pre on reverb. Been, since I've been away and from I don't you. have to have it totally wet for I heard my mix. This is wet. That's really echoing. So so I'll bring wrong. it down. I made a mess of things. So it's why got a you bit said of so long. Of that reverb here, right? And again, it, what happens is that it blends into the How can I make it? Baby, I did you wrong. We both know it's true. I wonder how you've been since I've been away from you. I heard somebody say that I was oh so wrong. So now I've got that done right. And again, I'm not going to go in too long. And I might, I might flip a little chorus on just to give it a little bit of a little bit more dynamics, right? So I put a little chorus on just to show just, you know, kind of just 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 add a little bit more. Uh, let me show where's my chorus at. My chorus is around here somewhere. Where's my chorus at? There's my chorus right here. So again, so now I've got a, I got a little bit of chorus on it. And the chorus is a little bit wet, just a little bit wet. And again, it's just giving me a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit helping my vocal out. You, I heard somebody say right. that I was oh so wrong. So I made a mess of things. Kind of close to double. That's why you said so long. How can I make it right? 
So that's how I want to sound. Now, again, you may want to sound differently, but this just gives you an example of how you can actually adjust your overall tone to give you a better tone, whether it be better, whether it be worse in this case, to give you a better tone. And lastly, what I want to do is I want to show you guys one more thing is that you heard my breathing and my vocal, right? So now I'm going to go to audio edit. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I, had some, I had some technical glitches there that I had to work through, right? It took, it took a second to straighten them out. I got a lot of drivers going on right now. But anyway, so I wanted to show you guys one more thing, right, which happened starting around uh, uh, bar 13, right? I put my vocal down. Remember, I set up my vocal change, right? Um, uh, uh, Five-band EQ, right, PG Dynamics, a reverb, and echo chorus, right? But if you notice, if I play the vocal, How can I you hear that? Right. My breathing. You can hear my breathing. I'm gonna get it right tonight. So how can I get rid of that breathing, right? Well, I can go to audio edit. And if I go to audio edit, and what is that bar? What was that bar? Uh, let me see here. Let me go. Let me go back out for a second. Bar thirteen was where I started from. So if I go to bar thirteen, and we go down here to bar thirteen, right? And I put something. I just put a little marker here. That's why you sit so long. How can I make hear that breath? Now I can go in here, right here, and I can cut that out. Just by doing that, I'll cut it out. Cut that. Cut that breathing out, right? So now that breathing is not there. How can I make it right? I'm gonna get it right tonight. Notice that I got two places, right? I gotta get it right tonight. <laughs> so, I, and I don't want that in there either, right? Where was I at? How can I make it right? So it was right here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to cut this other. I guess it's over a little bit. Cut that out. So now I'm going to get it right tonight. Baby, baby. So. Get those breaths out of there. So I'm now, like I said, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get some of these breaths out of here. That's enough for now. That's enough for demonstration purposes anyway, right? So now when I go back and I play it from this bar, all the breaths are gone. How can I make it right? So, and that's it. So again, so I showed you guys, you know, I showed you guys how you can take and you can change. You can actually take a guitar and bring, or take an instrument, I'm sorry, bring it in and out through bar settings, right? I had the guitar in, took it out at bar five, muted the guitar at bar five and brought it back in at bar 29. Bar settings, brought it back in here at bar 29. I changed the synth part to start playing an electric piano at bar five by going here, real tracks, selecting that, that instrument. I know they call it strings because that's their default, but change it to an electric piano there. And then at bar 13, at bar 13, I changed it to oohs and ahs, if you notice here. And then at bar, at bar 29, I'm sorry, bar 21, I changed it to strings again. So I did that for you. See, so I did that to give the song different dynamics. And also what else did I do is I lowered the volume at the string part, brought it down 20 dB so that it would fit a little bit better in the mix. Again, my vocal chain, EQ, dynamics, reverb, and chorus. I showed you guys how to go in audio edit and cut out the breaths in your song. So now when you play the song, I'm not gonna play the whole song, the video's long enough, but. Baby,
again. So guess what? I could do that whole song like that and we're done. And I did the song just using standard console, no DAW, no anything else, right? And again, we're all setting off, off and right. I use a USB microphone, of course, just a straight USB microphone. I even use the MME uh, audio driver. So I didn't get hardly any latency, which was interesting <laughs> to do that. Um, and when, you just go, when you're done, you just go to file. You just go to save special save special and save it as an mp3 song and you've got your song that you can share with all of your friends and neighbors and relatives in the world so again hope this helps again if you don't want to use a doll you don't have to but again also remember though the song has to be you know fairly fairly simple i'll say that because you only have what is it one two three four five six seven tracks to actually work with so if you've got a bass and a drum you know um guitar you may quickly end up running out of tracks to use but again this was just for the basic console i didn't talk about utility tracks adding any of those things none of that other stuff just straight straight pure band in a box in its native form okay hope this helps you guys and i will see you next time okay bye